You know, you do things sometimes, and you, after you do it, you don't think about the rest of your day, and you regret what you did. No, I didn't go drink or nothing. I shouldn't have ate that last taco with all that hot sauce on it. Well, we all know what today uh, is to the world, right? Huh? And you know what I regret? That all of that superstition and stuff, some of it, a lot of it is responsible because of the church. And uh, I, that's why I think we need to correct some things. If I can say anything, don't be superstitious. Now, I'm not telling you all to go out and, you know, chase black cats or break mirrors or anything like that. I mean, that's not breaking curses. Jesus is the curse breaker. But they have used religious teaching and stuff to create this whole Friday the 13th. And it's a bunch of hooey. Do you hear me? It, there is no basis to it. As a matter of fact, that's why I turn around and there's many things just, I don't know, many of you probably know. You probably all know about King Philip and how he rounded up the Knights Templar and began to torture them on Friday the 13th. That's one of, it that, one of the things that feeds into it. And you know how I use Jesus as the 13th man. Well, those who buys into the superstition says, well, Judas was the last one at the Last Supper. He was the 13th man. No, he wasn't. He was one of the 12 disciples. Jesus is the 13th man. He's the man in the middle. What does that start with? M. That's the letter 13. Okay? And he's the curse breaker. Listen, if you are in a believer in Christ... There is no curse on you, and don't buy into any curse in this world. Don't be intimidated by it. Don't believe in it. it. The only reason why there's things that has power is people believe in it. And when I say believe in it, they don't have faith in it. They have fear of it. Ooh. Say, ooh. Remember that guy? Ooh. <laughs> what was his name? Ernest. Okay. I feel better. <laughs> so here, here's the bottom line. The uh, superstitions and fables and, and all that leads to fear. And we as the people of God will not live in fear. We, we resist fear. Uh, you know, I love kingdom-minded people. I love people that has a well-balanced understanding of the Word of God and godly doctrine. Because listen, there's all kinds of doctrine. There's man-made doctrine, there's doctrines of devils, and man-made doctrine and doctrines of devils, they kind of go together, you really. But then there's the doctrine of God. There's the doctrine of truth. So as Word people, we're going to stay with God's doctrine. And I don't care all the, about all this other fabricated stuff or anything else. As a matter of fact, I put together some scripture, and it was just too much because there's so much. So I tried to condense it down and condense it down and condense it down just to give you a, fruit, a few because I want you to have an understanding of what the Bible uh, says or what people like the Apostle Paul uh, says about you know doctrine and about fables and stuff. And he was a man who, I mean, he was a religious man. He, let, me, let me go as far as to say this. He was a religious terrorist. And when Christianity arose, he did everything in his power to stamp out and destroy Christianity, including imprisoning them and killing them. Okay, so he, he, was, he was a terrorist of terrorists until he was apprehended by the grace of God. And when he was apprehended by the grace of God, the scales fell off of his eyes. First, the light that he saw on the road to Damascus blinded him. So he had to go on to Damascus and have uh, a man named Ananias, which means grace, pray for him so that his eyes would be opened. And when his eyes was opened, all he knew was Jesus. 
all of his teaching, all of his training, all of his understanding as a Pharisee, and everything that he had been educated in the Old Testament about, and he was a brilliant mind, the light went on, and he understood it was all about Jesus. That's why he said all of his religion, all of his education, including his bloodline, that he counted it as... There's a good English word today, but I, I won't offend anybody, so I'll just go ahead and use the old English word. He counted it as dung. And if you don't know what that means, I'll give you another one. Poo-poo. <laughs> so when he was talking about false doctrine, it would be religiously incorrect almost to read some of the stuff he said. But we're not religiously correct. I mean, we're not even politically correct, are we, kids? Oh, thank God. Constipation everywhere. And everybody's offended at everything. Listen, that's another thing, you kids. I don't want to dare hear you getting offended. You, you know, offense is a choice. You're going to go around being offended at everything. I don't care if they're mean and nasty. I don't. You know what? It doesn't. Let, let me say it this way, too. Because everybody's always playing the victim now. And, 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 and they use it in the political field, and it's obnoxious. It makes me want to up Chuck. No offense, Chuck. Oh, but. <laughs> but come on, really? Offended at everything? And, and, and they act like a bunch of babies, but they're the terrorists. Really. I mean, they're trying to destroy... This is not my message. I don't... I, must be Friday the 13th. Oh. Don't be offended, and if and don't be a victim. I don't care if somebody tries to. I do. I don't mean that when I say I don't care. It it doesn't matter if there's somebody that victimizes you. Don't become their victim. Refuse to be a victim. <laughs> Refuse to be offended, and stand in the right and the power that God has given you, and walk in freedom. Walk in the freedom that God gave you. That's all, what all liberty is about. I've, I've, I've seen, you know, this post about the American soldier fought for your freedom and Jesus gave his life for your soul. But listen, not to take anything away from our military, but listen to this. Jesus didn't just give his life to save your soul. He gave up everything for your freedom also so that you were free from sin, so that you were free from the flesh, so that you were free from the enemy, and so that you co overcome in every area of your life, including all this vain superstition that's going around, which is a bunch of dung. And don't be offended. Now, a while back I did a whole sermon on that, but I just thought I would re-mention that because, you know, I'm going to, that's right. Stand up and be real men and women. Uh, th here's the thing. Uh, God wants us to be the people who he's created us to be. And not a bunch of, well, I can say crybabies, but I like, don't be a bunch of weenie neck, sissy. See, <laughs> see this will get you in trouble saying this in some places. Oh, my goodness, I'm going out everywhere. Howdy! I'm sure glad other people intercept my nasty emails, intercept them. <laughs> Maybe I should get started. I don't want to start. I want to keep going and do what I'm doing here. <clears throat> anyway, I was saying, you know that if you if you if you if you stay with uh, uh, around kingdom people, they don't get mixed up with a bunch of doctrine they keep jesus at the center just like the apostle paul he made it all about jesus and when you keep it on the center of who the center is about then you don't get off in left field or right field i'm going to give you an example here uh man i must be very blessed and very fortunate because i have survived eight endings of the world i even made it through the big one 2000 you get my drift 
I'm part of a kingdom that is a kingdom without end. I don't go around spreading a bunch of fear, and I don't think that disaster's around every corner or there's a demon under every walk, rock. If there is a demon under every rock, walk, I have the power and the authority to trample over every demon, over every serpent, over every snake, over every reptile and scorpion, anything that's of the dark kingdom. And I don't shudder in fear from the dark kingdom because the light in me is greater than the darkness. Even natural light is greater than natural darkness. And, and I use this illustration once in a while, while and just if, in case there's somebody here that hasn't heard this, you can test this yourself. Go into your dark home with all lights off and then go to your light switch and turn your light switch on, and if everything's operating and the power is going, you know, to the source, the light will come on, and it'll spread light throughout the room. And you can't, even for a moment, watch darkness resist light. Well, that's the way it is with the power of God when it comes to darkness. The darkness cannot resist the light. The power of the enemy that is against you can't resist the power of God that is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Isn't that funny? Hmm. Okay. So we have an opponent, but he's already, defend, he's already beaten. He's already defeated. And like I said last week, all we simply do is stand and enforce what our king has already done on our behalf and continue to take forth his kingdom. Pretty simple. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in just because it's kind of tough to get in here, and I tried to condense, like I said. Uh, the Apostle Paul is uh, talking to the young minister, Timothy, and he is educating him on these people who come in and stir up and they bring you know, all these fables, all these superstitions, all these beliefs. And what I'm going to do is try to kind of just read through this to get to the point to see what Paul is saying, because I'm going to read to what he said to Timothy and then what he said to Titus about this subject. He's, in, in 1 Timothy 1, 4, he says, Nor give heed to fables and endless geologies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in the faith. Verse 5. Now the purpose of the commandments, or the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith. In other words, the law of God, if you take it in the right context, is all for good and to preserve life, not to beat up, condemn, confine, destroy, or anything else. Those, the laws of God are not for that, but just what the apostle said. And then he goes on to say, from which some have strayed. Hmm. Now, why would they do that? So they can create man's doctrine. That's why. Having turned aside to idle talk. I almost want to kind of stop here because I grew up and I heard, you know, and I know now that I'm an older person, and I remember as a kid I was fascinated by superstition. I was fa fascinated by those dark tales and stuff because they were supernatural and they intrigued me. You know, and even though it scared me, I liked listening to it, but it, it was a bunch of junk. And people do that in religious circles, too. And just because something's supernatural don't mean it's spiritual. Somebody needs to go, whoa, because I want to know somebody got that. Because we confuse the supernatural with the spiritual all the time. There's a big difference. Just because something is beyond natural don't mean it's spiritual. Ask any warlock. Ask anybody that, that dabbles in the supernatural. And believe me, there's power there. But why do people play with that? In a word, I can tell you. It all has to do with fear and control. People just like to be in control. Okay, moving right along. So since we have established why this comes into religious circles, we'll just keep moving, okay? Howdy. 
Oh, let me do it this way. So there's all this idle talk they have turned aside to it, desiring to be teachers of the law. See, what they do is they use the law of God, take God's law, His doctrine, and they use it to their own benefit to control and to strike fear into people. And you notice there's a lot of doctrine in the church that brings fear to people. Some people come into the church and they have more fear before they came in. When I was out being a heathen and hooping it up and drinking and partying, I wasn't afraid of nothing. I'd walk down dark alleys almost naked. With $50 bills hanging out of my underwear. (laughs) I'm trying to keep this where you guys will keep receiving, okay? (laughs) You get the picture. I, 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 I was brave, but not brave in the things of God. I was brave in a foolish manner. Okay? But, okay, back to being teachers of the law. Okay. But what were they doing? They neither... Neither were they understanding what they said, nor the things which they affirmed. Whoa. See, I told you Paul was relentless. Because when this man came out of religion, all he knew was Jesus. All he knew was God. He dumped his religion, and then he confronted those who went around stirring up and trying to control trying to strike fear into those, those who would spread superstition religiously and gain control over people. Why would they do that? Why would they want to control people religiously? Well, let's keep going. Um, Timothy 1.10, For there are many insubordinates, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision. Do we all understand what that means? Okay. Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert the whole household, teaching things which they ought not, for the sake of dishonest gain. Now I know why that little cushion was on there. Okay. I like it better like that, though. Are you kidding me? People would actually take the word and the law and the message of God and use it for their own gain? Because, you know, in my estimation, they cannot have no fear of God and maybe don't even believe there is a God or they wouldn't do such things. How could you dare take the word of God and twist it for your own self? You know what Jesus said about those folks? He says they take and make the Word of God of non-effect. We all know how powerful the Word of God is. But that shows you how dangerous twisted and perverted doctrine is because it nullifies the Word of God. Dangerous folks. Glad we don't have any of them in here. Do you know that... (laughs) I'm always getting old religion out of me, man religion, because it was ingrained in me, and I don't even know it was there. And when, I, when the light comes on and shows it, i got to say, whoa, I just had an experience like this just a couple days ago, and there's a phone call i got to make because of it. But when we get caught up in self and we start using this thinker instead of listening to the, to the head of the household, which is Jesus, who is my king. He is my husband at home. And so I go and ask him questions. And when we fail to do that and to truly listen to him, but we use our own thinking, stink, stinking thinking, and then tell, well, this is what God said, and this is what I believe, and this is what I want to do, we can all fall to that. But it's a dangerous thing because we have become our own God. Because we're telling ourselves what we want to hear. So... When you go talk to Jesus, don't go talk to yourself. You go talk to Jesus and then listen to what he has to say. And nine times out of ten, he's going to overturn your apple cart. That's why you don't want to hear what he has to say. That's why some folks won't even pray about some situation. I said this in a joking manner a couple weeks ago when I was 
preaching about offering. And I said, if you just don't want to give what you know you should, go pray about it. Then I said, well, you better not do that because you'll end up probably having to give more than you was going to anyway. Man, it got quiet in here. <laughs> Money. <laughs> okay, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> so they do this for dishonest gain. And uh, Timothy 1.14 says, not giving heed to Jewish fables. I mean, he's like slamming them right here. And commandments of men who turn from the truth to the pure. Listen to this. This is powerful right here. This is why I made the statement, I like to hang around kingdom-minded people. Listen to this. To the pure, all things are pure. Do you hear that? Because we don't look for the corrupt. We don't look for the defiled. Because to us, all things are pure who are pure in heart. That's why, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their minds and their conscience are defiled. Okay, now that we got that out of the way. And I've got a whole series to do on this, but it's tough. That's why I've got I to gotta work on some good jokes, and I can't have any good flops. Because when I bring this, we've got to keep the atmosphere kind of light, because that's some tough stuff. But I'm going to just hit you kind of with a, since we got you to this point, I'm going to go ahead and hit you with some things that I want you to think about. I really want you to consider this. Would you trust somebody who continued to lie to you? Hmm. Really? Well, how many times has your own fear lied to you? Consider that. Think about that. But yet you still will listen to the tape that will run in you. And it, and it comes in a lot of ways. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's something you get in the mail. Sometimes it's a promise that was made to you and it was broken. Sometimes it's a stupid bill that you didn't expect to come in the mail. It could be, it could be anything. Sometimes it can be so unfounded But you get to thinking about it, and some of you go to the point where you start getting that tight feeling where you can't breathe and everything, and that fear begins to put you in a cage, put you in bondage to where you can't think or move. I mean, they got names for that. Uh, And and sometimes it starts with depression, and then it goes beyond that. It goes to the point where you think you're going to die. What's what's that called? Anxiety. Anxiety. There it is. Because it just, it begins to affect your entire, and you know, the, the thing is, when it's all done and said, there was no truth to it in the first place. So why do you not put up the shield to the lie, stop that tape running in your head, and listen to what Jesus said? Listen to the promises that Jesus made. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, in Scripture, I'm not going to jump the gun, but I'm going to show you, just because somebody says they're all that, and they tell you things, don't mean you just swallow what they say or just follow after them because they're supposed to be following after the one. Okay? Even me. If you guys are are living your spiritual life based upon everything I say, I'm telling you something. You better go check it out because if you stand before God and you say, well, Lonnie said. (laughs) Really? Because you got to seek out your own salvation in fear and trembling before God. You can't let me do that for you. I, I try to be diligent, and I try to listen to the Spirit. But sometimes I get in myself, and you all know when I do that. Sometimes it's okay, and sometimes maybe not. So you better be checking out the Word. Large amounts of it, as a matter of fact. If you're really interested in the things that God said and the promises that He's made to you, then you've got to get into, your word, into the Word for yourself. And you need to overturn those false things and most of us the things that were implanted in me was implanted in me when i was a little kid because i grew up in 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 a godly family so i was like i i told you i had a drug problem right because i was drugged to church every sunday i was drugged to a bunch of places i didn't want to go and thank god i got free and now i come with joy But I found the true meaning of it. 
But you know what? I heard God back then. I asked him questions. And now that I think back, he was talking to me and answered because I came with a simple childlike mind because I was a child. And I asked him questions and he told me things that were to this day have affected me and they were true. But he told them to me when I was a child because I was watching the performance of everybody in the church. And sometimes I would say, is that for real? I'd ask God that. Are those people, are they sincere? Are they serious? And God told me. When I was probably eight years old, he said, not all of them. He said, some of them are aping what they seen. You know what aping means? I didn't know what it meant when God told me that. And I went and had to ask because when I found out what it meant, it was much more powerful. And I didn't tell them who asked, told me that either. And they go, it's, it's when you see something and you, 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 uh, imitate it. You're aping. I'm like, wow. You know, that really says something to a a boy that heard this voice and told him things that he didn't even understand, but when it was all done and said, it made my faith in the one I was listening to grow. And then he told me that there are some that are for real. It's genuine. And this is all in the same house. we got people that are just aping and there's no truth in them. and We have people that everything in them they're doing is the truth. Sitting side by side. Man, I pray that we all have the truth. And, the, and not just have it, know it. Because if we're, if we're going to stake our eternal life on who we follow, then we be, better be following the real Jesus. We better be following the right Jesus, not some religious Jesus that some man's going to get up and tell you all about and there's no spiritual life in it because it's on you, wherever you go or whatever you do, to have that spiritual encounter with Jesus Christ and then take that light with you. You don't, listen, you should not be walking around in the darkness, in doom and gloom, in fear and in unbelief if the greater one is down on the inside of you. And if, and if it is, and if, and if you are in that place, then you need to tap into him. Because when you drink of him, listen to this. He's the living water. And you will thirst no more. Yet some people are always running around looking for the newest revelation or the latest thing happening. Really? You just need to get in love with Jesus and follow him. Listen to his voice. Because his voice is very distinct. You can be in an environment that is so loud, it drowns out everything where you can't even hear the person next to you. And when he says your name, believe me, you're going to hear him. He said, my sheep, he said, my sheep know my voice. That's the one I want to talk to you about. That's the one I want to tell you about. Shall we go on? (laughs) All right, Psalm 20. Six, I want to talk to you about someone I like very much. He was a crazy guy. He was a worshiper and a praiser. Danced in Jerusalem in his underwear. (laughs) He says this, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. That's the power, that's the hand of power and authority. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. Can I break that down for you? That means some trust in the military, you know, and in things more powerful than them. I used to, I used to like break this down. I trust in my Harley Davidson or my pickup truck and my shotgun. But that's natural things. And this is a spiritual battle that we're in. So we better trust in the right one. And he goes on to say, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. Hmm. Because he's the one. He's the help. He's where all of our help comes from if we will but remember him and call upon his name. Because as you remember him, he will remember you. As you join to him, he will join to you. That's why when we come to that communion table, we say, do this. He says, do this in remembrance of me. And as we are remembrance of the Lord, we are joined to him. We are remembered to him and made one with him. All right? <clears throat> so who are we going to trust in? Not your Harleys. I mean, I love my Harley, but I trust in the Lord our God. 
And in Psalms 51, or Psalms uh, 57, verse 1, be merciful. This is why David cries out. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you. Somebody say trust. I want you to think about trust. Because trust is key to move into the faith arena. To that area that God has for us. Because when it all comes down to it, this is where all the other stuff is thrown out. And when we begin to place our trust in the right place, that's when the spiritual activity will begin. That's when you'll come to know that you know that you know Him. And that you will begin to not just believe, but know that He is who He says He is, and know that He'll do what He's promised He'll do. It brings us into a whole new place. That's why He says, And in the shadow of your wings... I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. <laughs> we need to know who that, that one is who, set, who is, is overshadowed by the wings. Remember the Ark of the Covenant and the wings of the angels are stretched forth and the presence of God is right there on the Ark? We now can go into that place so far. Before we couldn't. Not until Jesus but we can enter into that mercy seat and come into the presence of God. I pursue, we, saw, we sung songs about it tonight, the pursuit of His presence to come into His glory and to be overshadowed by the wings in the very presence of God. That's amazing. We need to realize that God's love is bigger than any of our fears. We need to realize that God is bigger than any of our problems, any of our doubts, any of our obstacles. My God is bigger. Have you seen the size of Him? Well, you need to. He's, he's enormous. <laughs> the Bible says there's no sanctuary that can contain Him. The very universe can't hold him. He's a big God. Oh, don't be foolish and look at that little obstacle and say, what am I going to do? Quit your fretting and put your eyes where he is. Put your eyes on that invisible one who's called God. And he'll never fail you. He'll never let you down. He'll never leave you. Okay, I feel good. Okay, there was something I was going to bring back to you. I'm here, but I can't remember my point. was. Uh, it'll probably come to me. Does this start happening a lot, Patrick? Or <laughs> Yeah, why? because I, he's got that gray beard going on like I do. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. I have to wear some shirts. I do love this shirt. But my daughter gave it to me, so I gotta wear it. See, I gotta wear it because they're gonna watch. See, they make sure they watch on live stream. But I, it's like the shirt was built around this pocket. It's like the house that's built because of the hundred-year-old oak tree in the front yard. And I know some of you said, "Look at that." Yeah, some of you love yeller out there. I know you do. So that's for my daughter. All right. I, <laughs> no, I need some of you out there with notepads writing down those main points and you can shout them at me when I forget. It's okay, though. And here we go. Matthew eight twenty three, And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. There it is there. Now, you got to remember who these kids are. They're his disciples. And they follow him wherever he goes. And they're just not followers of Jesus. They were followers of Jesus in the flesh. Somebody go, wow. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Listen, if you want to depend upon somebody, depend upon the one who can sleep through the storm because there's no fear in him. I mean, whatever's thrown at us, he just like, who is in your ship? But let's see what these powerful disciples, these men of faith, 
these men who were trained by Jesus himself. Let's see what they do. And then his disciples came to him, and they awoke him, saying, Lord, save us! We're perishing! We're about to die here, Lord! You don't even care! You're down here sleeping, and the boat's sinking! See, you guys thought that, hey, man, just because the disciples did it, it must all be good. Hey, just because somebody says they're a follower of Jesus, you better make sure their words and their example lines up with the word of God. These were men who walked with Jesus, and yet, were they full of faith? No, they were full of fear and doubt and unbelief, and they thought they were going to die. And they were supposed to know that he was Messiah, yet they thought they were all going to die. That would have been a a, a bad end to a mission from God. That resonated with a few of you out there. Do you know that you're on a... You remember the Blues Brothers? We're on a mission from God. And if if that didn't help you, I don't know what will. Because if you didn't get the first part and you missed that, I don't know where you're at. So... (laughs) I don't think they like cop cars, that's for sure. Anyway, never mind. Anyway, (laughs) but listen to what Jesus' response is. But he says to them, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? I would almost be afraid to say that to somebody today. I mean, if somebody said they heard from God and I'm trying to tell them something, and the minute that they disagree with me because God had already told them something else, we're done. I am not going to try to overflow or overthrow what they believe or anything else. And if they're that sure, you go ahead. And I'll wait over here. You got me? Because if somebody says, oh, God told me or God said, and here's the thing that I don't get. Many times when I, in a situation with somebody like that, they'll come back, whether it be a couple days or a couple weeks or maybe even six months, and say, well, now I'm going to go do this. And I'm like, oh, God changed his mind because didn't God tell you God just randomly changes his mind all the time, right? No, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he would change his mind. Okay? If you want to say God said, you better have not talk to yourself but talk to God. And that's a whole six messages right there. Just saying, if you come to me to pray about many things, I'll pray with you and agree. But there's some things that if you come to me with, I'm going to say, well, what are you doing? You know, because sometimes we need to line ourselves up in obedience to God's word, and that might make just the problem go away. It might not be a problem of prayer at all, but a prayer of obedience to God's word. Does that make sense to some of you? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> why are you fearful, fearful, O ye of little faith? What does Jesus do? Then he arose... And rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. Now there's, you know, I have a lot of questions there. Uh, Would they have drowned if they wouldn't have woke them up? (laughs) That's the natural mind thinking out loud. But maybe they should have been men of faith and rebuked the waves and the wind themselves. But they didn't have the fullness of the Holy Spirit either, so I can't really slam them for that because they didn't receive that until jesus died and ascended okay so anyway so the pressure's off of them we can just use them as an example and that's why it's there the amazing thing is that when jesus spoke to the elements that he created here's the amazing thing the elements recognize the voice of creator like when he would speak to natural things the water and he would walk on it and it became solid but the thing is he was walking on the word of god which is himself people who try to walk on water will sink but if you walk on god's word there's no telling what you'd be able to do think about that oh i got we're going to stop early tonight so i'm going to try to do this in five minutes all right let's see how i do I could make other comments about this, but I think we'll move on. We can visit that one anytime. That's a good one. Y'all just need to read that. Matthew chapter 8. As a matter of fact, go and read all of First and Second Timothy. Go and read Titus so you get the fullness of what Paul's talking about, okay? 
and I'm not going to get this done in five minutes if I keep doing this, but you'll understand the false doctrine that they was trying to teach, that which was trying to empower them and put people in fear, and you'll see. They tried to make people have fear about all kinds of stuff, so you've got to do this, and you've got to do that, and you've got to keep this day, and you've got to circumcise yourself, and you've got to, oh, go. I didn't say it. But, you know, okay. But I, I got hit with that. I mean, I'm still a little raw. And it's been years. I need to learn to let that go, huh? Maybe pray for him. Oh. I don't want to. Oh. <laughs> don't listen to that, that silly voice in your head when that comes and talks to you like that. Because that's the wrong voice. Okay? All right. Let's go, let's, go to, let's go to John, 1 John uh, 4.11. Beloved, because this is the answer to all of it, okay? Because it, well, it says it right here. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. And just in case you don't goof that up in your thinking, that perfected doesn't mean you have been perfect. It me- in other words, you, you're not above making a mistake. It means that his love has been made complete in you, which is the right direction to take you to a perfect life, if you want to look at it that way. But it means that you are complete in him. His love has been made complete in you because it's all about relationship. And he goes on to say, there is no fear in love. Ooh, here we go. Remember this whole fear thing. This is how to break out of all the bondage, the false doctrine, all the lies that's ever been perpetrated on you, all the victimization in your life, where you don't even have to say, I'm offended anymore. And I forgive that person, or I forgive those folks, or I let that whole situation go. Because love casts out all fear. Because fear involves torment. We don't want to be tormented anymore, do we, kids? I'm tired of living in fear of every little thing. I'm tired of thinking something bad's going to happen tomorrow. You know what? A good life is in store for, me, for every one of us. And if something bad happens, we're going to stand in the middle of Jesus and He's going to weather us through the storm because we're in His boat. Ship, ship, I meant ship. (laughs) Fear is gone, the torment goes, and the love and the faith and the light of God replaces that. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. You can't have fear and be perfect in love. So we got to get through that. We love him because he first loved us. Us. Look, I got three minutes. Ah, that's amazing. We love him because he first loved us. He loved us and gave himself for us even as while we were yet obnoxious, heartbreaking sinners. Christ died for us. Um, there are some things. I already did a little bit of the supernatural versus the spiritual. This is important. We could do a whole series on that. We could also do a whole series on fact versus faith. Uh, Here's another thing. If you receive a report that is negative in the natural realm, and and the report is that a medical, say it's from a medical doctor, and he says you got something and it could take your life. What you don't do is go into denial. And Christians have done this for years. Thinking, I don't accept that. I don't believe that. Because, but that's not the, that's not the way out because if the doctor's report says you got some illness that's going to take your life, that might be fact, but it's not truth. It might be true in this earthly realm, but that's not truth. Truth is, by his stripes, I am healed. And the truth of heaven 
overrides the facts of earth any day. Anytime heaven and earth collide, earth has got to give way to heaven because heaven is superior in every way. And sickness and disease is part of the darkness. The fear is part of the darkness. But the light of Jesus has the ability of we will open up and receive it and plant our feet in Him has the ability to drive all that out. We should be guardians of the kingdom and take forth the light and enforce everything that God has paid for through Jesus Christ, His Son, through all of His suffering. Was it in vain? No. No. I have a receipt right here. And because of this receipt, I can go say, See, God, it says it right here, and I know that God is not a liar and that your word is true. Therefore, I'm standing on the promise, and I am knowing that it is done because you said it, and I believe it. Oh, Bob, he did this. Jesus said it, I believe it, I believe it because he said it. I know his word will never fail you. Jesus said it, I believe it, I believe it because he said it. I know his word to be true. Jesus said it, I believe it, I believe it because he said it. I know his word will never fail you. Jesus said it, I believe it, I believe it because he said it. For I know his word to be true. Oh, mm, I know his word to be true. <laughs> God bless you kids. Come communion table tonight and receive of the Lord Jesus Christ, His body and His blood.